Thank you so much for joining me today, the 33rd day of our Lenten devotional journey. We're reading from John today, John 12, verses 1 to 8. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, who had, he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, Why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, Leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. I would like to look at that last sentence. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. I've heard this interpreted as this interesting conversation about Jesus talking about his own death, and that is a very legitimate way of looking at it. But what if we broaden it out to Jesus' example and his teaching and how that relates to the poor? Do you remember that Jesus very, very often called out the rich people in the community, the people with wealth and with power, he pointed out how they were missing the point of God's kingdom. At one point, he even said it was easier for a, a camel to go through the eye of the needle than a rich man to enter God's kingdom. He had this deep relationship, this deep feeling, this deep understanding of the poor. In fact, very often he would choose to eat with them and associate with them rather than people who were sort of like the in crowd, the folks that you were supposed to meet with. And so with that in mind, when he says, you always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me, is he perhaps reminding us that one of the reasons that we always have the poor with us is because we're not following his example. We're not taking the steps to eliminate need from our world. We're not taking the steps to shift where wealth and power land so that everybody has at least what they need. I think actually that interpretation feels a little better, especially since in John's gospel, it comes right next to this conversation where Judas was saying, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? Wouldn't we call this virtue signaling today? People who make big plays and big words and big discussions about how we should be taking care of people, but it's more of the often than not so that their guilt can be set aside more than actually making a difference in the lives of people who are living under the poverty line or people who are oppressed or people who've just had some really bad luck in their lives and need a little bit of help to get back on their feet. Jesus called out the disciples the same way as he calls out us. The reason we have poor in our world is because we don't follow his example. His example is one that will eliminate need and make this world the kingdom of God. Let us pray. Jesus, your words are difficult because they call us out. They are beautiful because they are clear and easy to follow. And they are convicting because we know what we should do, and yet we don't. Open our hearts and our minds, dear Lord, that we may see people in need through your caring and loving arm, eyes, that we may wrap our arms around them and care for them, that we might see that a person in need is exactly the same as us, 
that humans are humans, no matter where their status is in this world. God, open our hearts, open our minds, and open our resources that we may feel more willing to share. Share the gifts that you've given with us, that everybody in the world may know your love through grace and mercy. We pray this in the powerful name of Jesus, our Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm.